good morning everyone so welcome to microwave engineering video lecture series in today's video we are going to understand what is isolator what is the working principle of isolator and what are the applications and s matrix of the isolator so isolator is a two port device like a gyrator so this two port device will provide very small attenuation for transmission from port 1 to port 2 but it provides maximum attenuation from port 2 to port 1 so here so this is a simple uh, block diagram so it is port number 1 this is port number 2 as you can see here in the block diagram so when it is moving from first port to second port a wave we are having a transmission with very 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 small attenuation but whereas when you are moving from port 2 to port 1 you are going to have uh, maximum attenuation so in case of microwave uh, sources so when you are connecting such sources to a load uh, this is our desired path so from source to load power has to be uh, traveled but because of the impedance mismatching always we used to get reflected powers towards the source the power which is coming towards the source that is reflected power that power may damage or change the frequency of operation of the source so in order to overcome that particular problem so uh, there is a microwave component called as isolator so this isolator can be placed between a microwave source and a load the job of isolator is it is going to allow only in one direction that is this direction that's why uh, when you look at the uh, the microwave component physical microwave component of an isolator on the top of the device uh, the arrow mark will be printed that indicates the direction of the power flow so uh, and when it comes to uh, reflected power from load to source almost you are going to receive zero reflections at the source that means whatever the reflections they are coming due to the impedance mismatching those reflection power is going to be absorbed by the isolator that is the very very important uh, requirement uh, in microwave communications so when isolator is inserted between generator and load generator means the source or input the reflections from the load are completely absorbed by the isolator without affecting the generator output that means the source properties so that there is no change in frequency output power due to variation in the load so that is the main requirement uh, in the microwave communication so that uh, problem can be solved by using a component called as isolator so uh, if you look at the microwave bench setup so after the uh, power supply you will be having a, a, a microwave source after the microwave source and before the load you are going to find isolator block or isolator device so that is the uh, importance of this particular uh, topic so here uh, now we will uh, look at the uh, construction of the uh, isolator so here so this is how it looks the construction so in this case so this is port number 1 and this is port number 2 so this is our rectangular waveguide and here the extra component here uh, we are placing here is resistor card here and one more resistor card here basically the purpose of using resistor card is to absorb the uh, power and here rectangular waveguide is converting into circular with a twisted of 45 degrees twist so please uh, note down the the value so in case of the gyrator uh, we have 90 degrees twist but in this case we are having 45 degrees twist so after the twist so this is going to be a circular waveguide so inside this circular waveguide we are going to place our ferrite rod so in this case we are using a clockwise ferrite rod with a rotation of 45 degrees that is important in previous case that is gyrator 
we have used 90 degrees in anti clockwise but now we are using a theta with 45 degrees in clockwise and this circular is going to be converted into rectangle and coming as a output at port number 2 so this te10 te11 or te10 they are the uh, modes uh, for the wave guide so here so this isolator construction is similar to gyrator because that is also two port this is also two port device except isolators makes use of 45 degrees twisted wave guides rectangular wave guides whereas in case of gyrators we have used a 90 degrees twist so in uh, most of the uh, exams uh, they used to ask the differences and similarities between gyrator and isolator so there these points will be very very useful Uh, for you and 45 degrees clockwise rotation ferret rod is used in isolator in case of gyrators we have used 90 degrees anti clockwise ferret rod in gyrators okay so here the resistive cards resistive card means this one these are resistive cards two we have placed so these resistive cards are placed along the larger dimensions of the wave guide so as to absorb any wave whose plane of polarization is parallel to the plane of the resistive card that means if any wave whose plane of polarization is parallel to this resistive card then that particular wave is going to be absorbed by these cards that is very very important so this isolator is going to provide 20 to 30 db isolation from port 2 to port 1 okay and one more thing the resistive cards which uh, we have seen they are not going to absorb any wave when the plane of polarization is perpendicular to its plane that means the job of these two resistive cards are whenever any wave is having a uh, plane of polarization parallel to the plane of resistive cards then the wave is going to be absorbed by these cards if plane of polarization of the wave is perpendicular to these resistive card plane then nothing will be absorbed it is going to be come as a output from the respective ports that is a uh, meaning so here in this case uh, we can see when we are moving from first port to second port when we are moving from first port to second port so here we are giving a input at port number 1 which is rectangular wave guide so we are writing as uh, te10 and after entering because this plane is not parallel to resistive card so nothing will be absorbed so it is going to cross this resistive card and it is uh, reaching at the uh, twisted so in this case we are using 45 degrees twist so as we have seen uh, the difference between the uh, ferrite and uh, twisted rectangular wave guide in case of twisted rectangular wave guide when we are moving from left to right the angle of rotation will be anti clockwise when we are moving from right to left the angle of rotation will be in clockwise okay with respect to its given degree so in this case 45 degrees twist has been used so the change will be 45 degrees rotation in anti clockwise and after this it is going to enter into circular wave guide and it is going to cross the ferrite rod so in this case ferrite rod is 45 degrees clockwise so this 45 degree is going to be added with one more uh, moving with clockwise so it is going to have a a zero zero degree phase shift so this is our input this is our output that means whatever we are giving with the same uh, plane of polarization we are going to get as a output when we are moving from or when we are having transmission from port 1 to port 2 so if you look at the uh, second scenario in second scenario when you are giving input at port 2 so what is the output so when we are giving input at port 2 so what we are having so we are having given input so this is your te10 input so this te11 means it enters into circular wave guide because this input is perpendicular to the resistive card plane so it is not going to be absorbed it is uh, moving forward so it is going to cross the ferrite rod which is moving in clockwise with 40 so moving in clockwise with 40 so we are going to have this particular wave and then after passing this ferrite rod we are having a twisted wave guide the property of twisted wave guide is when we are moving from right to left 
it is going to make a clockwise rotation with a given angle so given angle is 45 degrees so already it is having 45 so if you uh, add 45 more in clockwise it is going to be this one so this particular uh, uh, wave is having uh, plane parallel to the resistor card so the entire wave is going to be absorbed by the resistor card as a result zero output is going to be received at port number one that is output port in our uh, example so that is how we are going to have only uh, one way uh, propagation and we are not going to have any any reflected wave uh, reaching to the uh, source that is the uh, importance uh, of isolator that's why uh, in every microwave bench setup so this isolator will be the default microwave component that will be used after microwave source and uh, before the load so now we are going to understand uh, what are the scattering matrix of uh, a two port isolator so since it is a two port isolator the matrix size would be 2 by 2 that is s11 s12 s21 and s22 and both the ports are perfectly matched so that is s11 is equal to s22 is equal to 0 and as we have seen here so there won't be any power or signal will come from port 2 to port 1 only one way transmission so that's why so we will be having the property of isolation is s12 is equal to 0 s12 means s12 means 1 will be your output 2 will be your input that means if you give input at port number 2 and output at port number 1 that is always 0 uh, in case of isolator so so we have modified the standard s matrix according to the conditions then we got s is equal to 0 0 s21 and 0 now we order to find out the value of s21 we have used the property of unity that is s matrix and its complex conjugate multiplication is equal to i so here s is 0 0 s210 0 0 s210 and its complex conjugate is s21 star is equal to 1001 so here so if you simplify this uh, we are going to have the final s matrix as 0010 0, 0. so further if you write output is equal to s matrix into uh, input matrix then we are going to have b1 is equal to 0 and b2 is equal to a1 so for these particular uh, expressions we will go with uh, taking different cases that is case number one is if a1 is not equal to 0 a2 is equal to 0 that means if there is no input given at port number one this is port number one this is port number two this is our isolator so a1 is e a1 not equal to 0 means you are giving a input and a2 is equal to 0 means you are not giving any input so in this case so what is the b1 value b1 is the output at port 1 right that is b1 is equal to 0 and b2 is equal to a that means at port 2 you are going to have a and case number 2 if a1 is equal to 0 and a2 is not equal to 0 that means at port number 2 you are giving an input and what what is the value of b1 b2 so in this case we are going to have b1 is equal to 0 and b2 is equal to 0 that means wherever you are going to give port number 2 as input you are not, you are going to get everything zero as the output that means nothing is going to come out of the port number 1 because of the reflections so only this device is going to work from port number 1 to port number 2 that is the uh, discussion about isolator so in the next class we are going to see uh, what is uh, circulator so what is the operation of circulator uh, along with its uh, construction diagram and also we are going to see uh, what are the applications of uh, circulator and, uh, and its S matrix. Uh, thank you. Have a nice day.